Here's a question which is basically a straightforward factoring question where we got to take a quadratic and factor it to find the roots, and then we're going to subtract the roots to get our answer. But the one little wrinkle here is that there's an a value other than 1. If you recall, ax squared plus bx plus c is the standard formula, standard equation for a quadratic. And this a value is typically 1, right? x squared plus 7x plus 10 might be a type of question you might see. Pretty straightforward to factor, but when you have this a, in this case it's a 2, sometimes it can make things a bit complicated because now if we take our quadratic x squared plus 7x minus 15 equals 0, and we start factoring it, we realize, wait a minute, this is going to have to be a 2x because 2x times x is 2x squared. And now suddenly I have to multiply, like whatever this number is, it's going to multiply by 2 when I then add it to this times x. So it just gets a bit more complicated. Now you might be able to do this by what's called by inspection. In other words, just by looking at it, testing out numbers and seeing which one works. You might be able to do it that way, and that's great. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick that will help you do any of these questions where your a is other than 2. It's a nice little shortcut that really helps. And this is basically how it works. First thing you're going to do is you're going to temporarily take this 2 and multiply it by the c value. Now, you're not actually doing any algebraic manipulation here. This is just a little shortcut trick. So you can imagine like this is in brackets and parentheses as a sidebar. So if you did that, you'd get x squared plus 7x minus 30 equals 0. Okay, now what you would do now is factor this. What are two numbers that multiply out to negative 30 and add up to 7? So we would write this out. Uh, we'll write that in a second. What are two numbers that multiply out to negative 30 and then add up to positive 7? Well, how about 10 and negative 3, right? 10 times negative 3 is 30. 10 plus negative 3 is 7. What you do now is you say, okay, write your x squared. Or actually, write your go back to your um, original place, 2x squared, and break the 7x down into these two. So you're going to break it down into 10x minus 3x. So all I've done is I've turned 7x into 10x minus 3x. Notice that's still 7x, but I've broken it down according to the two roots that I would think would have to happen in order to multiply out to this negative 30. And then we again, we go back to the minus 15. So you're only using this little middle step. It's not even, again, it's not an algebraic step. It's just a little shortcut to say, okay, what are the two numbers that multiply out to negative 30? It's 10 and negative 3. And then you go back to your original equation, and all you're doing is you're breaking this up into 10x and minus 3x. That's the only change you're making. Now you might say, well, what good is this? Well, now what you're going to do is factor by grouping. Take a look at each of these and see what you can factor out of them. So this guy, I can factor out a 2x, and when I do that, I'm gonna get x plus five. And out of these guys, I can factor out a negative three, and when I do that, I get, well, you know, x plus five. And what you need to see is this and this equaling, equaling each other, because then I can factor the x plus five out of both of these terms, and I get x plus five times 2x minus three, and there we go. So now I factored it. Now, you might say this took a while, and yeah, it did, but it's a guaranteed way to factor any of these A questions. You might be able to do it straightforward. You might have been able to figure out it's going to be 2x and minus 3 and x plus 5. That's fine. But this is a guaranteed way to do it if you don't. And now we just finish up the problem. So now x plus 5 equals 0 and 2x minus 3 equals 0. So x is negative 5 and x would be 3 halves. Now, R is greater than S, so that means R is going to be 3 halves, and S is going to be negative 5. And now we do 3 halves minus 5, which is the same thing as 3 halves, sorry, 3 halves minus negative 5. So now it's the same thing as 3 halves plus 10 halves, so we get 13 halves. That's choice B. So again, you don't have to do this. It's just a little extra trick for those of you out there who want it to solve these questions when the A is anything other than 2. And especially when you get like an A of 8, where it, the breakdown could be 4x and 2x, or 8x and x, and then you have to look at all the possibilities, it's really helpful to have this trick so that you can avoid all of that. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll, and you can find the link in the description below the video.